today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and today I'm joined by Jason Beckerman. It's good to see you, Charlie. I'm it, excited to be here. It's very good to see you too. You're our head lawyer here at TMZ. That's me. And one of the friendliest blokes around the office, I oh, must thank say. thank you. That's sweet of you. So we got some uh, good stories to discuss with you today. Lauren Boebert. Yeah. We got her at a DC airport flying in to go to work. Um, and we talked to her all about that handsy incident this in is my the favorite story of 2023. It could be. It took nine months to get here, but I think this is my number one favorite story. She answers all of our questions yeah. about how she got handsy with her on a first date with a guy. Yeah, <laughs> and a, a, a last date. A first too. and last date uh, yes. with a guy at a Beetlejuice concert or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. We'll talk about Kevin Costner. Uh, and his wife, Christine, they've settled their divorce now, mm -hmm. surprisingly, because it was the most bitter divorce. It was going through the courts, but it's over now. Good luck to them for the rest of their lives now. Uh, but to begin with, Shannon Beadle, uh, she's a real housewife of yeah. OC. Uh, she got into a really messy car accident on Saturday night in Newport Beach. So... I went down to Newport Beach yesterday. You did? Yes. To investigate the story? Yes. Wow. It was one of the first times I've ever felt like a real reporter, honestly. <laughs> it's not like I'm at LAX asking people about farts or, you know what I mean? Just like stupid I questions. I think you're selling yourself short. I think you get out there. Some, sometimes it's farts, but other times you're like asking pointed questions about big stories, yeah, I'm right? Yeah, I'm trying to set a contrast. Oh, though. okay. Fair enough. So, yeah, so yesterday I went down and um, did a bit of talking to neighbors. And we got this surveillance video of the crash. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty crazy, actually, because these streets in Newport are really thin. It's almost like they're one-way streets, but I think they're not. You just have to kind of pull over if someone's headed towards you. Yeah. These are really thin streets. And a bit before midnight on Saturday night, um, she was racing around in this car and lost control of it, hitting a property... Um, and then she fled the scene. Now, that's all really bad and stupid and everything like that. But her stupidest act was she drove a bit further down the road, parked her car, came back and pretended she was walking her dog yeah. just to sort of like see the damage or I don't know, yeah. just rub a neck a bit at what she'd done. Uh, and cops, I don't know, cops knew it was her and they booked her then and there. Yeah. They saw that she was intoxicated when she was walking her dog. She just totally messed this one up. Well, it's amazing what makes sense to you in your mind when you're drunk. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I'll do? This yeah. makes perfect sense. It's like foolproof, yes. right? I'll walk upon the scene. I'm with my dog. What could I have possibly done wrong? <laughs> right. You know, but uh, yeah, so she's nailed for hit and run, probably felony hit and run because she created a lot of property damage. Yes. It, could, could, it could be charged either way. If there's damage to a person, it's always going to be a felony. Damage to property could be a misdemeanor. But I think this one's pretty big. Clearly, really hammered, uh, and you know, caused a lot of property damage too. Really, just sort of, you know, it's tens of thousands probably to that property that she crashed into. Yeah, and um, I mean, neighbors told me that they heard that she was um, having a big fight with her ex boyfriend. Oh, interesting. Just, and so she's got this like on again, off again relationship with this guy, John Jansen. Yeah. Uh, if you watch the show, it's a lot about John Jansen and her yeah. love affair. I don't watch the show. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, this is, uh, the, the cameras weren't rolling at all. They're not filming The Real Housewife. Right. This would be great fodder for the show. She'd be talking about it the next day. You know, Andy Cohen would be there talking to her about it. Yep. Um, but all we know from her side is basically what her lawyer is saying. And also one of her friends is saying stuff too. But, you know, it's a standard stuff. She's apologetic. I, uh, She's so, remorseful. So let's talk about the statement from the lawyer. So Go on. Bader's lawyer tells TMZ, I spent quite a bit of time with Shannon yesterday. She's extremely apologetic and remorseful. We will be awaiting the official information on the case as it becomes available. I hate that statement. Of course, she's apologetic she's, and remorseful. It means but nothing. Like, it means nothing. It right. is empty words. And as soon as the charges come, they're going to start downplaying this, right? Mm. As soon as they char charge her with a felony, it's going to be, well, she's not that apologetic and remorseful. Yeah. Because really what damage was done? Nobody was hurt in this entire thing. So I, I, I just find it, you know, the, the height of hypocrisy that they come out with these statements. I find her entire antics, the DUI, the crashing into the car, they're going to get the dog. I find somebody who isn't really that apologetic for it, didn't say at the scene, didn't leave a note, 
to call <laughs> Leave than trying to lie about what had happened. You know, right. it's, it's, it's not the kind of remorse you want from someone. Okay, then you're her lawyer. Yeah. What are you advising her to do and this say? This exact statement. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean? Like... Oh, what do you want from me? Uh, well, yeah, no, I, 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 I would honestly... I, what else are you going to do, I guess? Um, maybe not issue a public statement. I don't think it's that important to do. I think it makes mm. you look kind of like you're using this and trying to, you know, uh, salvage your own public relations in some way. Which may but, be true. Which may be, well, yeah, I'm sure it is entirely true. And Andy Cohen's, you know, making a call. He's pissed off. Is you know. he pissed off or why would he be pissed off? Uh, well, actually, maybe not. I mean, if they're going to exploit for the... He's pissed off because it didn't happen during the season run. As, <laughs> right. As, as if you get a drink and drive, Shannon, yeah. at least do it when we're filming. But this is bad. I, this is not like, you know, cheating on your ex or something that he loves and flirts in it. Or This is dangerous this behavior. This is dangerous. Somebody could have been really hurt. I mean, she slammed into this building. If there was a pedestrian there, they would have been killed. This oh. Just no, there was no stopping her at that point. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I could... I could hardly drive down the streets in daylight because they were so thin and you had to yeah. like look out for things, let alone, you know, when it's pitch black. And also there's a gas, she, she narrowly missed a gas station. On the other side of that wall yeah. is like a big gas station. So if she'd she's driven she's into that. she's flying. Like fo folks haven't flying. seen the video. She is going really fast. This is not like somebody who's like sort of drunkenly kind of meandering down the road. She's flooring it around a curve. She skids out. Almost spin, spins out and hits hits this building flush on. The front of the car is completely caved in. There's huge damage to the building. You know, it's a, it, it was a big deal. Obviously, a pedestrian there, they just would have been slaughtered, right? There. Yeah, I mean, she's probably lucky that she just, you know, knocked over a few. Oh, for sure. She got cement. really lucky, she, right? And, and, and yeah, so we'll have to wait and see what comes of that. Um, but she's in deep strife. But w when the show starts airing, and this is going to be, you know, story number one, I guess. To your, to your point, about Andy Cohen not really minding that much. But right, it really will be bad luck. Because this is, this is big news, I believe, in the real house world's universe. Um, everyone's. I, I don't know. I'm not one of those like. What do you call them? Like houses? Like what do you call? I people? love your stuff. You're holding yourself up to some higher standard, but you've <laughs> never missed an episode of any of the Bachelor series ever. Oh, you know, Bachelor's one thing. You know, <laughs> real house world's another. Right. On to our next story. Representative Lauren Boebert, uh, she said that her hookup with the theater guy uh, will not be continuing. She will, he will not get another date. So if you haven't seen this video from a day or two ago, uh, you, do yourself a favor and look at Lauren Boebert and this guy have their hands all over each other's privates uh, in the movie theater. Not a movie theater, uh, a, a musical. It's a um, musical. Musical yeah. theater. Oh, yeah, they're seeing Beetlejuice live. Right. That's a, that's a sing-along, right? Be I, I, is it a sing-along? I guess so. But I, it's at least a musical, right? It's not, I don't think it's a sing-along. Right. But the, the one thing to keep in mind, because you, know, you and I may differ on this a little bit, mm. there's tons of kids that go see Beetlejuice. This is something that is meant for all audiences. It's a family show? It's a family affair. Yeah. All right. But I mean... I don't take issue with her and her date getting handsy because I think that it's somewhat private. We've got a. It we, is dark. We, it's, it's dark, dark in there, and, and we've got like security video where we can see. Right. And their security in, in these theaters, their security video is like night vision security video. Yes. So we're seeing things that the people around her probably couldn't see. Yes. And that is not the reason she was sort of evicted from the theater. The reason she was sent out by security is because she was vaping, yeah. because she was singing along, actually, yeah. a bit too boisterously, um, and because she, I don't know, she was just causing a ruckus. You know, you can see in the security video, video, she's causing a ruckus, and there's a pregnant lady behind her, sitting by herself, just trying to enjoy a bit of Beetlejuice. Who leans forward and says, do you mind stopping? And she says, you're a sad and miserable person. <laughs> what I mean, Lauren Boebert is just cut from a different cloth. Yeah. Like, she is something else. Well, we got her yesterday in DC, returning to work, uh, and this is what she had to say. Ultimately, all future date nights have been canceled, and um, I learned to check party affiliations uh, before you go on a date. Uh, but all in all, um, you know, it was, uh, it was mostly a lovely time, and, you know, I've taken responsibility for my actions. What she's learned out of this, this whole incident, the thing she says she's learned, is to check party affiliations right. before going on a date. Because the guy whose penis she was groping in the middle of the theater <laughs> happened a Democratic to be a Democrat. Penis. That's a Democratic, a Democratic penis. penis, so it leans left. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> that thank was you pretty very good. Much. That was pretty good. And, and, and she says, you know, that that somehow that was the cause of her antics in the theater was that he, he was left-leaning. Unbelievable. This guy's name is Quinn Gallagher, and he actually owns a bar 
that you know sometimes has drag nights. Right. She's against drag and or anything oh, of that. Oh, she's field. made horrible statements about everybody in the LGBTQ community, and meanwhile, and about all liberals. And <laughs> she's yeah. on a date with the Democrat who owns a bar. Right. That caters to that crowd. Yeah. But what a night for that guy, yeah. man. I mean, and it was so, a first date too. So, so she was he doing apparently this. is married, but oh, he's married. He's married, but the status of their his okay. he and his relationship with his wife, we don't really know. It's I, probably not good right it's now. It's probably <laughs> not good right now. If it was good before, it's definitely not good <laughs> yeah. now. But putting that aside for a second, it's a good mo- moment for him, right? Oh, I mean, it's your it's your claim to fame for the. It's you know, your claim to fame. You put he, it outside your bar right now. I got touched by Lauren Bobert. <laughs> <Right. laughs> this is Bobert's penis right <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just funny because the whole groping stuff. I don't mind. Almost in a way endears me to her okay. as she, it, okay. it makes her a bit more normal. Humanizes her a little Humanizes bit. Humanizes her because everything else she does and says and yeah. even her antics like shouting and vaping in the, she just thinks she's above it all and she yeah. thinks she's, I mean, the groping I can get down with. So so let me ask you this. She said it was her first date. I think this is lie number like four in the scenario. The first, biggest one, she said she was not vaping. She adamantly rejected yes. that and then the surveillance video comes out, comes out and shows she is. But uh, she says first date. There's no way. You and I have been on plenty of first dates mm-hmm. and plenty of, you know, seventh dates or whatever. Yes. They are groping each other in the theater. This is not the first time he's touched her move. I, I, right? I would doubt it. I would doubt it. But also they appear to be quite drunk. You know, like if, if they had had like a series of drinking in the afternoon and then headed out to the big Beetlejuice thing in the in the evening, yeah. maybe you're at a point where you're just like, you know, really loose with it all. This is a pair to me that has either had sex or is about to have sex. Yes. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's clearly early in the relationship. They, they have a fondliness <laughs> that's, that's not like four dates. You don't in. recognize that anymore, yeah, do you? Like... No, no, it's different. But, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I just, I just think that this, uh, I'm guessing this is not the first date. I think they've at least already had sex maybe earlier in the day to give her the benefit of the doubt. That's technically the first date. But I'm guessing they've seen each other three or four times. That's uh, my guess. I, I would guess so too. Yeah. I would guess so too. Do you think anyone on Capitol Hill, you know, you think Mitch McConnell goes, hey, Lauren, you know, do you think anyone talks to uh, her about it? Any of her colleagues? I, yeah. <laughs> I think I think she becomes like the, to the extent they didn't already know it, like, you know, how guys are, right? She's like the, she's obviously, she's very attractive. Right? Yes. She's, she's like a Capitol Hill nine. I agree. Uh, and, and so she's very attractive. And now that you know she's kind of into like dirtier stuff, there's some guys who are going to be very attractive. Because could you imagine if sort of like somehow video of you came out doing something like this and then you had to walk into the workplace Yeah. and everyone's kind of snickering about you? Yeah. No, it'd be hard. It'd be hard to get, get through that. Yeah. It really would yeah. be. It really would be. <laughs> What a great story. But I think Mitch McConnell would still like it. I think so. He's watching it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Kevin Costner and his wife, Christine, are officially divorced. Thank God. Thank God. Right, because they've been going through it. They're now finally resolved it and are divorced, and hopefully this thing will go away forever. She wasn't making life easy on him. You know, yeah. like he was trying to wriggle out of it. He offered her, you know, various settlements of different amounts and she wanted more 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 she did not uh want the prenup to be upheld yes they did sign a prenup because he was worth a lot of money when they got married yeah. and he continued like he's a very successful guy obviously um but she was sort of like the one looking after the kids and she was she like a, yeah. she's entitled to, to a big chunk right to a big chunk and now has to help take care of these kids and they're still minors and she's entitled to money to keep them in the in the sta- standards in which they become accustomed. Right. So they were married for 18 years. They had three kids together. Um, she was asking for, she wanted about 250 grand a month from him. Yep. Uh, but it ended up around 60 grand which a month. Which is right about what he was offering all along. So he won that element of it. He, he, won, he won the child support aspect. He was offering about 60 grand. She wanted 250. It came in at 63. So he won that aspect of it. There was whole idea of challenging the prenup but this prenup, he did something very smart for him, which we included what's called a poison pill in the prenup, which is something that says, if you challenge the prenup mm. and you lose, you're going to have to pay all of my attorney's fees for fighting it, which would have been in the millions, and there's wow. penalties on top of it, would have been in the millions of dollars. It's called a poison pill for obvious reasons. It's sort of, you know, basically, if you try to muck this up, there's going to be a poison pill that's going to pollute the entire thing. Interesting. And so, by great, do, great lawyering right ba- there. Great I lawyering, something. but you have to have the leverage to do it, right? Yeah. She said yes to that clause. A lot of potential spouses will say, I'll sign your prenup, but you know, I'm not going to sign a poison pill and you have to negotiate whether you want to include it or not. But he had all the leverage and she signed it. 
And that was the thing that was sort of a sword of Damocles hanging over her neck. If she goes forward with this, this sword might drop and chop her head off. It's a sword of Damocles analogy. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's really sort of what I think ultimately got to the resolution they got to. Because already she now owes about 300 grand to lawyers in, yes. in fee, various fees. If she had like continued to challenge the prenup and, you know, this poison pill had and taken lost. effect. She would have paid her lawyer's fees his lawyer's fees, penalties on top of it, it would have been disastrous. So, I mean, 63 grand a month, which is what she's going to get from him, you know, doesn't go that far towards, you know, paying off these fees, let alone if she had more to pay. Um, because the money's supposed to you basically... sound like a man who earns more than $63,000 a month. Well, I mean, she's got to pay for these kids. She's got to find a new house. She's got, Just you know... So everybody knows Charlie does not make more than sixty. dollars Oh, God, I wish, man. $63,000 <laughs> a year I'm almost happy with. No, that's not true. But... <laughs> But I mean, she's got to go and find a new place now, and she, she, yeah, her whole life has changed. Yes, she's got to go and start a new life somewhere else, and hopefully provide a similar sort of experience for the kids when she has them in her custody. Well, remember, in addition to the sixty-three k a month, which is what about seven fifty a year, it's a ton of money. Okay, yeah, that is a lot. Um, he's also paying for like the private schools and things like that. It's not like she just gets to sixty-three; okay. she's got to figure out life. It, it's like she's got these kids who are being well provided for by their father. And in addition to that, she gets 63K a month. So, and that includes like going to pay her mortgage or her mm. rent or wherever she is. All the stuff that might come with, like she can get the G-Wagon to drive them around. You know, all that stuff is included in that. She's going to live a very nice life. Now that's 63K a month. The difference between child support and spousal support is it cuts off when the kids are 18. Okay. And I have no idea what her background, you know, he gave her loads of gifts during the course of the marriage. Those are all hers to keep. You know, it, I, I doubt she's going to be destitute afterwards. And, but, but nevertheless, it's, it's a different style of life than she had become accustomed Definitely. to. Definitely. Given his, you know, nine figures of wealth. Yeah. I mean, I kind of don't feel like we've seen the last of her. Oh, interesting. Because I mean, she's just caused such a ruckus with this divorce and almost savored in all of the different well, the stories coming out. Right. And the rumors are that she was, and he, a lot of parties have denied this, but there's some smoke here yeah. that she was banging his, his former really close friend who also happens to be a billionaire. So, oh. you know, she may trade in those circles for a little she's while. She's Lauren sanchez -y. She could be. Yeah, we don't we don't know exactly, but, but yeah, she's she's pretty. She's, she's super pretty. pretty. She's yeah. gonna, like she couldn't like trade to another guy, yeah. you know. She yeah. I think she'll be just fine to yeah. be honest. And him, there are big reports that he's trying to get back to Yellowstone. He really wants to be back on the show Yellowstone, yeah. which he's not on anymore. So, I don't know whose future is kind of brighter because he's out of that job which is uh, was a massive job it was yeah. his show but he's yeah. not on it anymore i don't know what the future holds for both of them but you know he can act though he's still a viable actor i think he, he's, he's older he's, he's older yeah but he's i think he get roles right he's kevin yeah. costner yeah. he's a big star he could get yellowstoney type roles yeah pretty good absolutely well yeah. thank you very much for joining me here Charlie, today it's Beckerman. always a pleasure happy to happy to join anytime always a pleasure never right, a chore beckerman <laughs> okay guys <laughs> see thank you for joining us we'll see you here tomorrow bye bye